Shadows ground your sketches to the page and help the viewer understand your objects better. In this video, I'll show you how to, you can construct a drop shadow from an overhead light source, a cast shadow from a nearby light source, and another cast shadow from a faraway light source, such as the sun. So first let's start with just a simple drop shadow below the object with um, the light source right above it. So first I'll just start with a, uh, a box in perspective. so we can keep track of it. Okay, so it's a box in perspective. And what I wanna do is um, cast a drop shadow below it so the light source will be coming right from above. And in uh, a side view of that, we've got our box. Um, we have our, our light source from the top. And really, we're, we just want to cast a shadow down onto the um, floor here. And this is a side view. So really what we're interested in is that height and um, displaying the fact that there is going to be a shadow cast from the object onto the floor. Obviously there's no like thickness to it, it's just um, the absence of light, but what we can do is you can see it if you, um, it, when we view it in perspective. So the way that we would do this here is um, from the light source we are going to cast a, uh, sorry that shouldn't have helped do this in a different color, we'll cast a line down from the uh, face that uh, is presented to the light source. So it's just the bot, uh, square on top. And then what we're gonna do is, is project the lines down onto the floor. And I'd say it'll kind of go around to, to around there. Um, and so the floor is somewhere here. And what we're gonna do is just um, connect these lines also in perspective. So these lines here, um, these points are now going to, are making up essentially like another surface, another layer, um, but that's now establishing the, the surface of the floor. Um, and here we can see that this is our kind of shadow. So I'll just hatch it so you guys can see. A little better. There you go. So that is just doing the drop shadow from above. Um, it's already, it's always going to be just below it. And um, this is a nice, quick, easy one to uh, just establish that there is sort of a, uh, a floor underneath it that it's sort of hovering up above. So next what we'll do is um, draw a box again, but we'll kind of place it on, on the floor and we'll cast a shadow from a nearby light source, like a lamp or something. So here we'll do Another quick box. And I'll add some line weight to it. Great. And 
in um, so really what we have here is uh, I'll kind of draw another large square around here just to kind of show the sort of surface we're working on and also I'll do a little side view of it so here we have our cube and what I'm going to do is draw a light source here and it's kind of projecting light in all directions. So that'll be over here. So that's our light source. Where it sits nicely on the uh, floor there. And uh, what we're going to do is establish what kind of shadow this box will be casting from this light source. So what's happening here is this light source um, is going to be, what we're going to do here is, is construct a shadow on this side of um, this cube because the light is coming from here. So this is the absence of light. And the way that we do that is essentially draw straight lines from uh, from the light source and that is what is establishing just like we had in our previous just below it um, this light source is now casting the shadow to the side and behind um, or I guess really uh, very much to the side of this uh, of this cube so the first thing you want to do when you're constructing this kind of uh, light source uh, shadow is we need uh, two points from the light source. The first one being the top of the light source where the light is emitted from, and then the second one is uh, on the surface that, that the object shares with the light source. So I'll do the top one A with um, the orange marker. And what we're doing here is we're just taking this um, point there and trying to hit it through each of the top corners that um, of this object. And I'm going to extend it past as well so that it, we have distinct markers on the floor. So that's it kind of projecting down. And they're doing this kind of um, array, which is great. And then the second uh, the second color I'll use to kind of denote this is um, the blue for the bottom to establish where um, where on this on the surface it will um, the shadow will stop. So here what I'm going to do is cast this to all of the four corners through here. And also, extend it so that goes to that one great and now what we're doing is finding out um, the lines that share the same vertical um, where they intersect and then that is going to be the um, that intersection point is going to be where we have our shadow construction so here we are essentially projecting the top face down onto the surface. Um, that's what this square represents. But we're not just kind of interested in, in that square. There's also these, uh, these lines that denote the outside of the object. So we don't really care about these um, on the inside. We, we actually care about the, the ones that kind of form the the outline the outline of the shadow so it'll be it won't be that one but it'll be this one since it's coming from here and that's the kind of outside of the object so um, I'm just gonna quickly patch this and then we can kind of talk about how this shape changes depending on how high this is or how far away this is Great. 
so yeah, you can see here that we've got um, this lamp light source that is sharing the same plane as this object. So um, this, if we were to move B, uh, the B point in further, then what we get is an even sharper angles um, of the kind of projected light, uh, shadow. And if we were to uh, raise or lower, in this case, if we lowered this, um, uh, the height of this lamp, then we actually get a longer shadow because the orange lines will be um, longer and projecting b before they meet with the blue lines. So really it's a matter of how high and how far away you have um, uh, your light source from the object. And obviously the, uh, the, the, the last thing to consider is um, where around the object is the light source. So there's um, the orange height and the blue kind of distance away from it. Um, but you can also decide to kind of pivot this uh, light source in around the object and that will also change the, um, the coordination and um, construction of your cast shadow. So that's it from uh, drawing a cast shadow from a nearby object. The last thing that I'll draw is, um, so I'll just write that here nearby. Um, the last thing I'll do is the cast shadow from a um, far away light source. and I will just strengthen the line light. And now what we're doing is, um, since the, the light source is really far away, like the sun, for example, if this box was outside. Um, since it's really far away, then we don't really get the same projection um, as we would in the nearby light source where you are getting a much wider kind of um, shadow from it. Um, here, it, it also becomes a little bit easier because um, now the orange and blue lines that I'm gonna be casting are really going to just be parallel to each other because the light source is so far away. So what I'm gonna do is also cast it down on this side, but what I'm gonna do is um, establish the kind of um, where this box uh, or where the top rectangle um, projects down on the floor and then I'll see how far I want the cast shadow to, to go. So here I'll just extend um, lines from here. And they're all gonna be parallel to each other. And then what I'll do with the blue marker is also just extend out four straight parallel lines. And now what we're interested in is where the coincidental lines intersect. And now we have um, the start of our cast shadow. So here, I'll just do it in the uh, paper mate flare again just to find this cast shadow. Connecting all of the points. And I'll do some uh, patching again to define it.
So yeah, this is, I'll just kind of draw in where the light source is coming. The light source is kind of coming from here, but it's so um, high up and so far away that the convergence of the orange and blue lines, um, there really is no convergence. So what's happening is that all of these are essentially drawn in parallel to each other, which makes the drawing of a, um, uh, of a cast shadow quite, quite easy. Um, and then what else, what, another thing that we can do to better define this shadow is that uh, this object obviously doesn't have any um, shading on it yet. So what we can do is just quickly um, drop in a some more hatching on the shadow side of the object. And here I just like to do it kind of parallel to each other as well, keep it consistent. And maybe just kind of strengthen the object lines a bit. Um, yeah. And what you can do, um, the shadow is always going to be stronger than uh, any object kind of shadows. So I'll just add in another marker just to better define it as well, because we've got a pretty a lot going on here. And so the last thing I'll talk about with shadows is um, for this far away. And actually this is, this applies to anything, um, to any of the shadows, is that the shadow is always going to be strongest at the point closest to the object. And then it becomes a little fainter um, when it is farther away from the object. And I've just quickly represented this by um, increasing my hatching spacing and also the um, marker rendering. I, I, I left more white space there. And because and really what's happening is that there is really not a lot of uh, light traveling around the object and reaching these points here. Whereas over here, it's farther away from the object. And that makes it so that more ambient light is being able to um, get picked up by the cast shadow here. So it is still a cast shadow, but um, it is slightly uh, lighter as it goes farther away. So that's also just a nice um, kind of way of, of styling your, your cast shadows. So there you go. That is uh, the drawing cast shadows and drop shadows from three different kind of methods. We've got the sunlight, daylight kind of far away version. Um, then we have the cast shadow from a lamp nearby, constructing it with the uh, different points from the lamp. And then finally, a nice quick drop shadow right from above um, where we are just cast casting a shadow right below the object.